After that, popular retail chain does a complete 180 on their dress code. Now for every thumbs up this video gets, one Karen doesn't get any Christmas leftovers. But they were so good! So please smash that like button. And if you're new, subscribe and turn on notifications for new stories from Reddit every single day. Boss agrees with Secretary that I'm not the office manager, so I stop managing the office. When I was doing my articles at a small law firm, internship, to be admitted as an attorney, I was the go-to person for everything at the office, setting up computers, buying stationery, paying bills, going to court, seeing clients, etc. After being admitted as an attorney, I continued doing all this because the secretary only did about 20% of what a secretary would usually do and refused to do anything else. My boss does some shady business, doesn't pay taxes, etc. So he couldn't just fire her for fear of her ratting him out. He also never disciplined her. We are not in the US. Since we worked from my boss's mother's house, the secretary also spent about 50% of her day just chatting to his mother, and they became fast friends. Guess who was always the evil one that everyone ganged up on? Yours truly. I was made out to be incompetent at my job, and I used to cry a lot, and almost became an alcoholic from work stress. One day, the secretary got really upset with me after I asked her to buy stationery since we didn't have enough staples. And after a heated argument, told me that I'm not the office manager, if I was. Bear in mind, I was her senior, both as an attorney and in number of years worked at the firm. My boss did nothing and rather got upset with me, and so did his mother. I decided then and there, I am done doing both secretary work and my attorney work because I was working roughly 50 to 60 hours per week, standard is 40, trying to get everything done without receiving overpay. The unemployment rate in my country is around 30%, and in the legal field, supply of lawyers exceeds demand. She knew this, and my boss knew this, but no one cared, and I was basically working myself into an early grave. Cue malicious compliance. If everyone agrees that I am not the office manager, then I will stop managing the flow of the office, and only do my attorney work. I stopped paying the bills, buying the stationery, reminding my boss of important meetings, etc. Within two weeks, the electricity was cut off for ten days because it wasn't paid, and my boss's elderly mother and the rest of his family had no electricity. We could also not work for those 10 days. Once the electricity went on, the phone lines were cut because of non-payment. We could again not work. The post piled up. There was no stationery. We couldn't do service of court documents because our service providers cut us off. It went on for weeks. I simply worked around the issues and sorted my life out. One example, when the Wi-Fi was off, I used my cell phone to hotspot my laptop without telling anyone. In the end, my boss and his mother begged me to do what I used to, but I refused. Since I was focusing more on my actual work, my fees increased and my pay increased as well. Shortly thereafter, I moved away from that office to our secondary office and worked alongside lovely colleagues who all did what they got paid to do. I've been at this new office, same firm, just a different location, for the last two years. Have you ever had a coworker who just wouldn't pull their weight? If so, what did you do about it? Please let us know. I've got one all right. He sits across from me every day, looking like a baboon. Am I the jerk for giving away a car I had gotten for my son because he was ungrateful about it? I have a somewhat troubled 18-year-old son whom I don't really know what's troubling him. By troubled, I mean that he sometimes skips class as he finds virtual learning hard. Sometimes sneaks out at night to be with friends even though I've told him he can't do that at this time. Puts up little fights when he has to do chores. Wants the latest and greatest gadgets even though he knows we don't have much money, etc. I'm not sure what I or my husband did to make him this way. But I think he's just been hanging out with the wrong people at the wrong time and have been looking for a therapist for him. Something that my son recently accomplished was passing his driver's test and getting his permit. And for that, I felt like rewarding him. He was very vocal about wanting a Tesla Model 3. But I told him multiple times that we don't have the money for one and we would get him whatever we could afford. He always objects to this by saying that his friends are going to make fun of him. We're going to get him something reliable, not expensive or stylish. A few days ago was his birthday, and we surprised him with a 2000 Subaru Outback. He was excited at first, but then when he saw the car, he immediately broke down crying, saying he wanted a Tesla Model 3 instead of this crap, and how he was going to be made fun of by all of his friends, and that he can't drive a stick. I told him that it was what we could afford, and it's very reliable, but he screamed about how he hates us, and is going to run away, and went up to his room and slammed the door. Needless to say, I was a bit hurt at how he reacted, and now had a car on my hands that I didn't know what to do with. Then I